in afternoon class. I'm glad you all could make it. Um, I understand that this whole remote virtual class thing is kind of new, kind of strange, but I'm sure it won't affect um, our class today. Um, I can see all of you via my computer monitor. Um, I think you're all here. It looks like you're all here. Thank you for joining me. I'm glad you are all here today. So, for today's class, we're going to be diving into something a little different than what we usually learn about. Um, today, as you can tell by the marker board, we're going to be learning about a s M R. Now, ASMR stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. I'm sure at least some of you if not all of you, have heard of this uh, ASMR term before. Maybe some of you have heard it from a friend, or maybe some of you have uh, experienced it yourself. Maybe just uh, accidentally came across it on YouTube. But today we're going to learn all about it and the process that goes in to making an ASMR video. I will be uh, taking questions from you, um, so feel free to just raise your hand, okay? The rules really don't change. Uh, I can see all of you, so if you have a question, just raise your hand, and I will get to you, all right? Okay. So, with our new subject. Does anybody have a question? What is ASMR? What is ASMR? Well, Jacob, that's a very good question. And that's what today's class is all about. But get into it a little further, um, and to answer your question, um, have you ever felt tingles in your head and spine? And feel deeply relaxed? store and 
while you're in the checkout line, the uh, the cashier you know, handles your groceries with the gentlest touch and bags them just ever so softly and gently. This is ASMR. It's that sensation, uh, that tingly sensation, as well as a deeply relaxed feeling that comes over you. That is what ASMR is. Right. I'm sure some of you may have experienced this um, without even realizing it. Now, ASMR uh, can actually be categorized into two different sections. Um, those sections are physical and psychological. Um, with physical, uh, that's those tingly sensations I was talking about. It's light and pleasurable tingles. Uh, you know, kind of like sparkles, uh, fussiness, or waves uh, of relaxation. Usually, usually in the head, neck, and spine. And then of course you have the psychological sensation, which it's more of that deep, relaxing feeling in your mind. It kind of it's the it's the sensation that kind of puts you into a daze. You know, kind of mesmerizes or or even hypnotizes you in a way. It puts you in that deep calming relaxation mode. So those are the two categories that ASMR is put into. Now within these two categories um, there's a thing there's always a, a thing that stimulates these sensations and they are called triggers and these triggers are what sets off the sensations now there are three main categories to these triggers and they are Problems. may have actually 
been a trigger to some of you. Just an example. But The three main categories of triggers are one, visual or observed. The second, auditory or heard. And three, tactile or Let's take a question from one of you. Who here has a good question? Yes, um, Joseph. How do I make a good ASMR video? Very good question. Um, how can I make an ASMR video. Well, to answer your question, I have with me a few pieces of equipment uh, that are used for the video making process, including, if you look behind me, instead of backgrounds. All right. Here you can see a plain white background, a black background, and a green background, or otherwise known as a green screen. Now, each one of these backgrounds can be used for specific reasons. Let's take the white and the black. It depends on um, the type of lighting scenario that you want. If you want, you know, maybe a brighter um, video, you can use the white. If you're planning on, you know, a darker video, kind of fading out the background so it just focuses on you, then you can use the black background. And then we'll get into lighting in a second. But now for the green background, or green screen. Um, there's two options. You can, one, use the green screen and on your editing software you can add a background. Any background that you want. It could be a, a busy street. It could be inside of a, a spa or a train car or an airplane anything you want or you can go with the approach if you have the time and patience and money, because this is a more expensive way. 
you can use actual props and build a background. But the green screen is a much easier, more affordable way to create an environment. Now, if we take a look at lighting, we have a couple different lighting options here. We have the box light with a shade, which creates a more softer uh, lighting experience. And then we also have the reflective umbrella light, which will add more of a kind of a spotlight effect. Um, especially if you use both side of you, you know, both sides is a little bit, you know, dark. You can use these umbrella lights to kind of, you know, blend it all together and just make lighting experience um, without any the umbrella light. There's a couple different options. We have a couple umbrellas. As you can see, here we have a cold tinted shade or canopy. And the one that I have shown is a silver canopy. All for different shades of lighting. Then we also have lengthy white background behind me. Just a soft white shade. non-reflective, of course, but it provides a similar lighting experience to the box light that I have. And then, of course, uh, with lighting, it's, it's technical. But once you get the hang of it, you'll be set. Um, you just have to make sure that you get the right angles, um, the right shades of lighting, etc. Now, soundproofing. Soundproofing is maybe the hardest thing to tackle when making a video. Some of it you can take out during editing, but still. One thing, it depends on the size of the room, okay? The bigger the room, the more echo you'll have. And the smaller the room, the more compact your sound will be. Um, there's plenty of soundproofing um, products available. This is one of them. It's a piece of foam. It comes in little tiles, like so. 
have a whole bunch of them here. But it helps keep the noise out. Um, there's many options of using these. You can either paste them against your window just as is. Use double tape, you know, tape them all together like a puzzle. Or you can attach them to cardboard and then post that up against your window to cut out any outside interference. And then of course there's soundproofing with the microphone itself and I have a microphone here as an example this is a foam attachment that helps cut out noise and filters it through there's also a fuzzy fixture, which is a windsock. You can use that during windy or breezy situations. And then of course there's also a uh, voice shield that you can attach to your microphone because right in front of the microphone to help, you know, cut out all that crackle and boom of the voice. And that brings me to microphone. Um, some of the main pieces of equipment you're going to need is one, a microphone. Second thing you're going to need, if not the most important, camera. This just happens to be a very old camera, so, you know, maybe not the best quality of camera to use these days, but if you're desperate and you're low on funds, cheap camera will make you a video. Another thing that you will probably need, uh, but first let me tell you, um, there's many microphones out there um, that you can choose from. Same thing with cameras, that's the camera I just showed you, there's other digital cameras, there's cell phone cameras. Heck, if you have a couple thousand dollars to uh, to throw out, um, you can buy yourself a big, heavy-duty, Hollywood-style camera and make some movie magic. But anyhow, what are the next things you'll need? Hold your camera nice and steady and still. If you're using a cell phone, for instance, we have a snake style tripod. Real easy to use. It's fully bendable. You can twist it and turn it all over the place, set it down angle it right and start filming or if you're using a regular camera you know one that can screw on top of something 
Then we have the, you know, the typical three-legged tripod, which is you know, fully adjustable. You can raise it just by the the flick of a lever. And I mean, there's, uh, there's different sizes of tripods. You can get bigger ones than this. Um, of course, the legs also uh, extend. There's three levers here that open up. The legs fully extend. Let's take another question. Yes. Mm, I have no questions. Okay. Um, is there anybody else? Have a question. Yes, Michael. What kind of camera should I use to record? Great question, Michael. Um, what camera should you use? Well, if you're just starting out making videos, I suggest that you get something affordable and a camera that you're comfortable using. If you're not too much of a technology person, um, maybe a cell phone camera would suit you. Um, but yeah, definitely something affordable and something you're comfortable using. Does anyone else have a question? Yes, Billy. What kind of microphone do you recommend? Okay, perfect question to follow with Billy's question. Oh, Michael's question. I'm sorry. Um, what microphone should you use? Again, something affordable if you're just starting out. And something you're comfortable using. But, you're going to want to make sure that the microphone has a good quality to it. Um, two microphones I highly recommend are the Blue Yeti and the Zoom series. Um, preferably the Zoom H4. But Again, if you're not a tech, uh, a technology person, Zoom H4 is really not going to be for you. Um, a Zoom H1 is less technical, but still more technical than a Blue Yeti. So. Now, the microphone I brought with is even more simple. There's nothing to it. It's pretty much just plug and play. It does have a decibel level uh, button on the back and a power on and off switch. That's it. So, you know, just shop around 
look for affordability, um, comfortableness, and quality. Does anyone else have a question? Yes, Nicola. Yeah, um, what are some relaxing triggers? Nicola, that is a very good question. What are some ASMR triggers? And that brings me on to another topic that I was about to get to is trigger items and how to perform ASMR. So the first thing to do really is to be calm when making an ASMR video. You know, um, you're trying to provide that, that comfort and relaxation, as well as provide those tingly triggers uh, without giving someone high anxiety or even a headache. So the best thing to do is be very calm and slow. There's actually a trigger that you can use, and that is slow hand movements, like so. Like that. Um, voice. Um, you can either do a soft-spoken voice, kind of like what I'm doing now. Or you can do a whisper like this. Some people like a whisper. They find it more relaxing and can help put them to sleep. And some people like a nice, soft, Everyone's triggers are different. Some people will have, you know, different triggers in common. But a lot of people's triggers and, uh, are quite different from everyone else's. So keep that in mind. Um, some other triggers are I have a few items here, for example. Um, let's take a simple book, for instance. Some people actually like you reading the book. Tapping on the book. many hidden triggers. Another one, crinkle sounds. Like this bag, for instance. If done right, real nice and soft, gently. 
something can actually provide some nice sounds. sound that some people like is like when you go to a barber shop of scissors. Again, these are just examples of the many triggers that are out there. There is a variety of triggers. Um, I wouldn't have time to show you all the triggers that are out there. I saw many. So, just an example. Another thing. three items, well, four items. We have some metal tapping. Kind of sounds like a rain on a tin roof. also have tapping on plastic items. We also have tapping on glass kind of makes that sound when you use a spoon stir up a drink that has ice in it We also have tapping on a cardboard box. And then there's some visual tricks. like the slow hand movements. And speaking of the slow hand movements, there's all kinds of ways you can do that besides just fluttering it in front of the camera. Um, you know, as I'm doing right now, talking to all of you, um, just, you know, motions, you know, slow 
emotions, um, touching of things, slow uh, petting of things, or, or tracing anything, any slow hand movements that you can think of. Um, and that brings me on to another trigger. Tracing. I have a pointer stick here. It's actually a chopstick. You can use this to trace anything. Like, let's take for instance, this book. Okay, I can trace real nice and slow and gently it's kind of relaxing you see what I mean almost puts you in like a trance It's actually kind of putting me in a trance by just looking at it. But yeah, then you can trace anything with these um, pictures, words, shapes, anything will work. Um, that brings me on to my last two triggers. different, but they're still called the same thing, a brush. Let's take the hairbrush, for instance, first. So, typical hairbrush, but it has tapping options, it makes a nice sound, it's a hollow plastic. We also have the bristles. And last. You can use a small one. Medium sized brush. Some people like camera brushing. The up close brushing real slowly. And provide relaxation. And then of course we have a bigger brush we can use. Those are just some of the triggers or trigger items that you can use to make an ASMR video. Uh, 
let's take one more question before the class is over. Yes, uh, Alan. How do you edit a video? Do you recommend any specific software? Wonderful question. Um, how can I edit a video? And do you recommend any good editing software? Um, I recommend Sony Vegas Movie Studio. And without going into the to any large detail about editing, because that's another class. Um, there's really two things that you need to do. Putting the video together and editing the audio. And then when you get all of that done, getting all the white noise out, um, any unnecessary background noise, and also piecing your, your video clips together. Uh, then you have to pair the two together and make sure that it, you know, your voice follows your mouth. <laughs> Otherwise it'll just sound silly, or look silly. But yeah, that's about all I'll tell you today about editing. Because that's all for another class. And it'll take the entire class to teach that. Um, but, alright, it's time to go. I will let all of you get back to the rest of your day. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Speaking of which, and I will see you tomorrow.